This is the only zombie movie that truly gave me the creeps. The zombies aren't spread by a virus like in typical zombie flicks, but through a mysterious Southeast Asian ritual, adding a whole new level of horror that'll send shivers down your spine even through the screen. The story is intense from start to finish, so whatever you do, don't watch it alone. A group of students goes camping during their vacation, having a blast with food, drinks, and fun. But Wary, one of the students, ventures into the jungle alone to take photos. He stumbles upon a used bottle of essential oil, with eerie red symbols etched on the bottle. Curiosity gets the better of Wary as he opens the lid, only to be met with a pungent green smoke, prompting him to quickly toss it aside. Inside the broken bottle, there's this tar-like black liquid, with a strange creature with nails sticking out of it. Instinctively, he takes a close-up photo with his camera, but just then, he hears someone calling his name from the bushes. Where he turns around but finds nothing there. Thinking it's just his imagination, he nonchalantly leaves the scene. Little does he know, right under the nearby tree, there are many similar bottles piled up, as if they're offerings to some terrifying evil spirit. Unbeknownst to Weary, he's already been tainted by something sinister without realizing it. After ending their camping trip, the group immediately drove back to school. Since it was summer vacation, the main gate of the school was already closed, but that didn't stop them as they quickly snuck in through the back gate. The other two students, who lived nearby, opted to head home. However, as they passed by a building, Weary heard the chilling sound of someone calling out. Despite feeling scared, he nervously peeked inside but found nothing, just like before. Taking a deep breath, he hurried to catch up with the rest of the group. They thought they had pulled off the outing without a hitch, but little did they know that the duty teacher had been waiting in the dormitory all along. For breaking the school rule against leaving campus without permission, the teacher punished them by assigning them to clean the dormitory toilets. But as they were cleaning, a sudden thunderbolt struck the school's power lines, plunging the entire campus into darkness. Being in a remote location, the interruption also cut off their mobile network. The pitch black toilets made it impossible for them to continue working, so they started joking and fooling around. Unbeknownst to them, where he stood silently nearby, his face pale with shock. Images from earlier in the day kept flashing through his mind, and suddenly, he began violently vomiting the tar-like substance. Hearing the commotion, the other students rushed over and immediately helped Wary back to the dormitory to rest. Adley noticed he had a high fever and decided to go to the infirmary to get some fever-reducing medicine. But as soon as he left, Wary started convulsing violently. He began spewing out large amounts of tar from his mouth and then fell into unconsciousness, completely unresponsive. The sight left the other students horrified. Just as Ketchik was about to check on him, where he suddenly opened his eyes, which were now pitch black, and sprayed Sam with tar. It was evident that he had lost control and turned into a zombie. Luckily, at that critical moment, Adley arrived with the teacher, and the strong beam of the flashlight frightened the mutated Wary away. By the time Adley caught up, Wary had vanished into thin air, leaving his classmates in shock. Seeing them shaken, the teacher led them to his office to find out what had happened to Wary. However, they were all just as puzzled. The teacher intended to call for help, but found that the phone had no signal. Although Adley's phone still had battery, the signal was weak and required them to go to the top floor of the school building to make a call. The teacher promptly took Adley and rushed there, leaving the others in the office. However, as soon as they stepped out, they heard screams coming from the dormitory building. The teacher, concerned for the students' safety, decided to split up. Adley went to the high-rise to make the call while he went to the dormitory to assess the situation. However, what he saw made his hair stand on end. There were bloody corpses lying on the beds, with several zombies feasting on their classmates. To his horror, he watched as the corpses on the beds began to mutate. The teacher immediately bolted out of the room, with a zombie hot on his heels. He managed to hide and narrowly escape. But just as he was about to leave, another zombie lunged at him. In a panic, he turned on his flashlight, which frightened the zombie away with its bright beam. Meanwhile, the security guard also heard the commotion. Following the noise, he quickly spotted a student's figure. Not knowing what was happening, he rushed over to investigate. Seeing the bloodstains on the student, the guard sensed something was amiss. At the same time, Adley had just arrived at the high-rise and was equally startled by the screams. He hurriedly took refuge in a nearby classroom. After a thorough search, he finally picked up a faint signal near the window. But instead of calling for help right away, Adley made the impulsive decision to call his sister, Alia, asking her to come to the school to pick him up, 
oblivious to the fact that a zombie had already made its way into the classroom. Just as Adley was halfway through his call, the signal abruptly cut off. As he prepared to redial, he heard a strange noise behind him. Suddenly, a zombie lunged at him, it was the mutated wary. Adley couldn't dodge in time and was bitten on the arm. Acting quickly, he grabbed a pair of scissors and stabbed at Wary, watching as the zombie fell to the ground. Seizing the opportunity, Adley made his escape, unaware that Wary had risen once again. Fortunately, Adley managed to return to the office unarmed. He recounted the terrifying encounter to everyone, mentioning how he had wounded Wary but wasn't sure if he had killed him. The group listened in shock, but Adley was more concerned about whether he would turn into a zombie after being bitten. Meanwhile, the teacher's situation was equally grim. As he prepared to head back to the office, he suddenly spotted a large gathering of zombies ahead, standing under a tree as if performing some mysterious ritual. After reciting a few incantations, the bodies lying on the ground transformed into zombies. The teacher shuddered at the sight and had no choice but to take a different route back to the office. However, as he walked along, he heard a noise coming from a nearby room, it was the security guard who had narrowly escaped death. The teacher quickly sought refuge inside. Despite their harrowing experiences, neither of them knew exactly what was happening. After discussing their options, the two decided to head to the office to meet up with their classmates before making any further plans. Upon receiving Adley's call, Alia and her friend, who had initially planned to go home, returned to the school. However, finding the main gate still tightly shut, they had no choice but to opt for the back entrance. Meanwhile, in the office, Adley suddenly realized that his sister might not be able to enter the school. Concerned for her safety, he decided to go to the duty room to get the keys, with Ketchik accompanying him for support. The two quickly reached the duty room but failed to locate the keys to the main gate. Suddenly, Adley began experiencing symptoms similar to Wary's. He started seeing strange patterns in his mind before vomiting asphalt, an ominous sign of impending zombification. A zombie appeared nearby, prompting the two to hastily take refuge in the duty room. Adley knew what was coming and, to protect Ketchik, bravely led the zombie away. As expected, the zombie didn't attack when it caught up, indicating that Adley had indeed been infected but had not fully transformed yet. Meanwhile, Alia and her friend had made their way to the football field through the back entrance. They noticed a blood-stained soccer ball and a mysterious figure standing by the goalpost. Just as they were about to approach, the figure snarled and lunged at them menacingly, sending the two girls running in the opposite direction. As they fled, Alia stumbled and fell to the ground, just as the zombie was about to pounce. Alia's friend quickly used her backpack straps to restrain the zombie, but it broke free shortly after. Fortunately, at that crucial moment, the principal and the security guard happened to pass by. Hearing the commotion, they rushed over and used their flashlights to rescue the two girls from the zombie's grasp. However, more zombies were closing in, leaving no time for explanations. The principal swiftly led the group in a frantic dash back to the office, where they narrowly escaped danger. Ketchik soon caught up, only to learn that Adley had turned into a zombie. Alia, devastated by the loss of her brother, was overcome with grief. But their immediate priority was to flee the school by car. Unfortunately, Alia's friend revealed that the backpack containing the car keys had been taken by a zombie during the struggle, shattering their hopes of escape. Despair loomed over the group until the principal remembered the zombie's vulnerability to light. If they could activate the school's emergency generator, they might use the lights to their advantage and escape. To cover all bases, they split up, the security guard led the others to activate the generator, while the principal and Alia headed to the tallest building to call for help. Just as they reached the bottom floor, they found it swarming with zombies. Luckily, the zombies didn't linger for long, giving them a chance to head upstairs. But just as Alia was about to take out her phone, she suddenly saw Adley standing not far down the hallway. They cautiously approached, unaware that Adley had completely lost his senses. The principal quickly moved to block him, only to be knocked down by a punch. Alia attempted to intervene, but she ended up becoming Adley's target. She kept calling out his name desperately. Hearing his sister's cries seemed to momentarily restore Adley's sanity. He slowly lowered his hands from her neck, but he was soon overtaken by the evil force once again. In a desperate attempt not to harm his sister, Adley, fighting against the last vestiges of his sanity, leaped from the high rise. With zombies closing in on the upper floors, the principal had no choice but to forcibly take the grieving Alia away. They managed to hide in the innermost classroom just before the zombies caught up. However, Alia's nervousness caused her to accidentally bump into a desk, alerting the zombies. 
they had no choice but to escape through the back door, with the horde of zombies hot on their heels. Although they managed to shake off some of the zombies, as they were about to take refuge in a warehouse, they were ambushed again. Despite successfully opening the warehouse door at the last moment, the principal was bitten on the arm while fending off the zombies. Fortunately, Aya used her flashlight to drive them back temporarily, but more zombies were attracted by the noise, trapping them inside the warehouse. On the other side, the security guard had led several people to the engine room. However, due to the generator's prolonged disuse, not only was the fuel tank empty, but some parts also suffered varying degrees of damage. In order to repair the generator, Ketchik ventured alone to the tool room, grabbing necessary tools and gasoline. But on his way back, he caught the attention of the zombies. He sprinted desperately towards the engine room, with hordes of zombies hot on his heels. Seeing the situation, the security guard rushed in to help him, successfully providing cover. Ketchik managed to enter the engine room safely, but the security guard was ensnared by the zombies. Outnumbered, the security guard was quickly overwhelmed by the horde, but his sacrifice bought valuable time for repairing the generator. Meanwhile, on the other side, the situation had become dire. With more and more zombies outside and the principal on the verge of losing his sanity, he had no choice but to sacrifice himself to ensure Alia's escape. He protected her as she fled through the back door, then ignited the gas canister in the warehouse, preparing to perish with the zombies. The zombies quickly breached the door, and just before losing consciousness, the principal ignited the lighter in his hand. At the same time, in the engine room, they managed to repair the generator. The lights caused the zombies outside to collapse instantly. They held on until dawn, eventually being rescued.